Imagine yourself under the vast cloak of the night sky, stars twinkling like beacons of an ancient divine code. Since the dawn of time, humanity has looked upwards, marveling, seeking meaning in the constellations that adorn our firmament. It's as if the universe itself is telling us stories, narratives written in starlight, waiting to be unraveled. In a statement of purpose echoing through the ages, God proclaimed, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Genesis 1 verse 14. In the celestial tapestry, each star has been meticulously placed, not only to illuminate the night abyss, but to serve as divine compasses, marking time and revealing destinies. Consider for a moment the magnitude of this design. The creator of the universe, in his infinite wisdom, positioned the stars in such a way that through them we could discern the signs of the times, the cycles of seasons, the passage of days, and the inexorable march of years. We are immersed in a cosmic clock, a celestial agenda that portends divine moments and movements. Now picture yourself on the brink of witnessing one of these prophesied celestial signs, an event so rare and wondrous it captures the imagination and stirs the soul. On April 8th, a magnificent celestial spectacle will unfold before attentive eyes in parts of the United States, Canada and Mexico, a total solar eclipse. Patricia Reef of Rice University in Texas describes the experience as transcendental. The temperature drops, day turns into night, and stars and planets shine in the daytime sky. A phenomenon that challenges our everyday perceptions, revealing the wonders of the universe normally hidden beneath the noonday sun. This astronomical event is not just a curiosity. It is a testimony to the divine order that governs the cosmos. The Bible tells us that such celestial signs are to be observed and interpreted, and here we are witnessing one of the clearest warnings written in the stars. Forbes and NASA inform us that total solar eclipses, though rare at any specific location, occurring only once every 366 years on average, are integral pieces of this celestial clock, marking epochs and eras, shaping human history under the watchful gaze of the stars. As we approach April 8th, a veil of anticipation extends over southern Illinois, Missouri and Kentucky, turning these locations into epicenters of a prophetically significant celestial phenomenon. This is not an isolated event, but an echo of divine order, a piece of the meticulously planned cosmic puzzle since the foundation of the world. In the scriptures, we find a promise, a prediction spanning millennia. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and on the earth dismay among nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. Luke 21 verse 25. Jesus said, painting a picture of a world in anticipation on the brink of a rebirth. He speaks to us directly, transcending time to reach us here and now, telling us that these celestial signs are preludes to something transcendent. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This warning is an invitation to vigilance, a call to observe the sky, not just with curiosity, but with a heart prepared to discern the signs of the times. We are being guided to understand that these celestial events are not mere astronomical coincidences. They are divine milestones, guideposts for our spiritual journey. To fully comprehend the message embedded in these signs, we must look beyond them, considering the complete panorama of biblical prophecies. It is not only the presence of signs in the heavens that alerts us to the end times, but also the emergence of false prophets, wars and rumors of wars, pestilences, and a growing apostasy, the departure from true faith. These are the contours of a world in transition, as described in the pages of the Bible, a world where truth is more precious than ever. The World Health Organization warns of the upcoming pandemic, the mysterious Disease X, while we witness conflicts and turmoil, clear signs of a planet in agony. 
This is the backdrop against which the sky will manifest on April 8th, a powerful reminder that biblical prophecies are not ancient tales, but living messages, breathing new life into our understanding of divine purpose. In the quietude of a moment of reflection arises a question that touches the core of our spiritual quest. If God were speaking to us, would we recognize His voice? And even more deeply, if we understood that He is communicating with us, would we know how to interpret His messages? In this modern world, where God's signs may not come through a burning bush as for Moses, or in visible manifestations of divine power, the question of divine communication takes on a new dimension. Perhaps we do not have prophetic figures like Moses walking among us today, but that does not mean we are alone or without guidance. The key lies in being vigilant and praying, keeping our eyes and hearts open to the signs of the times. The Bible tells us of various ways in which God communicated with His people. To Job, He spoke out of a whirlwind, a manifestation of His power and majesty that defies our understanding. In Exodus, he announced his presence to Moses in an extraordinary manner, causing Mount Sinai to smoke and tremble, a sight that inspires both fear and awe. Yet to Elijah, after the earthquake and fire, God revealed himself in a still small voice, a reminder that his communication is not limited to grand demonstrations of power. This spectrum of divine communication, from thunderous to whispered, emphasizes a profound truth about our relationship with the divine. God speaks to us in many ways, adapting His voice to the need of the moment and the readiness of our hearts to listen. Sometimes His message may be found in monumental events that change the course of history. Other times, it reveals itself in the subtle details of our daily lives, in moments of silence and personal reflection. In the complex tapestry of divine communication, one of the most intimate and personal ways in which God speaks to us is by leaving impressions on our spirits. It is an inner whisper, a certainty that arises not from external signs, but from the subtle touch of the Holy Spirit on our souls. This method of communication may be less visible to the eyes of the world, but it is deeply felt in the heart of the believer. Paul, the apostle whose life was a web of journeys, revelations and transformations, experienced this divine communication deeply. While waiting in Athens, his spirit was stirred to see the city given over to idolatry. This inner impression was not a simple emotional reaction. It was a call to action, a spiritual urgency driven by the vision of a city lost in worship of false gods. Similarly, on another occasion, when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul felt compelled by the Spirit to testify to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. In both situations, it was the divine impression on his spirit that moved him to act, to speak, to testify. Paul's experiences illustrate a vital principle about the nature of divine communication. The Holy Spirit interacts with us in ways that go beyond words, testifying in our spirits to our true identity as children of God. This spiritual communion offers us not only guidance, but also a deep assurance of our place in the divine family. In the midst of this understanding, it is essential to recall Jesus' words in Luke 21 verses 9 through 11, where he instructs us not to fear in the face of wars, uprisings, and natural disasters, for such events, though alarming, are part of a larger unfolding. He warns us that there will be uprisings, earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and great signs from heaven, but these events are precursors, not conclusions. In an increasingly interconnected world, the spread of information is rapid and widespread, often bringing waves of concern and uncertainty. Recently, the media has been inundated with discussions about an intriguing and somewhat unsettling concept called Disease X, coined by the World Health Organization and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. This term refers to an as-yet-unknown pathogen that has the potential to cause a severe global epidemic or even a pandemic. 
The idea of Disease X serves as a solemn reminder of our collective vulnerability to emerging health threats and underscores the critical importance of being prepared to face such challenges. Although Disease X itself is a hypothetical entity, it embodies the recognition that the next major disease outbreak may be something we have not yet identified. This highlights a vital reality, the need for constant vigilance and global preparedness to protect human health against future pandemics. In this scenario, leaders and experts from around the world are joining efforts in collaborative endeavors to develop action plans. The goal is to create robust strategies that can be rapidly implemented in the face of emerging viral threats, ensuring an effective and coordinated global response. However, the news of the potential emergence of a deadly virus in the future can naturally evoke anxiety and fear. This concern is reflected in a survey by the American Psychological Association, which revealed that nearly 7 in 10 Americans fear they are living through the preludes of a new major war. This shared perception of an imminent threat deeply affects the fabric of our daily lives, permeating our moments of familial tranquility with a sense of unease. The concern that pervades our days, an almost constant fear lurking in the back of our minds, invites us to reflect deeply. Are we living our lives according to divine design, or are we allowing fear to divert us from the path laid out for us? The realization that much of the population lives in a state of constant anxiety, exacerbated by a barrage of fear-centered news and entertainment, is a warning sign for broader reflection on our choices and perceptions. It is true that we live in times that seem to nurture fear, with news often highlighting danger, disaster and conflict, creating an atmosphere in which fear is not just an occasional visitor, but a permanent resident in our lives. This predisposition to fear is amplified by forms of entertainment that exploit our fascination with terror and the unknown. From horror movies to haunted houses, inviting us to flirt with fear in a context that should be one of leisure and escapism. This scenario confronts us with a fundamental dissonance between the state of constant anxiety in which many find themselves and the abundant life that, according to scriptures, was promised by God. The issue is not only about the presence of fear in our lives, but about how we allow it to shape our actions, decisions and perceptions of the world around us. The prevalence of fear and its exploitation both in the news and entertainment reflect and reinforce a culture that seems more inclined to highlight the negative, the dangerous, the threatening, at the expense of the positive, the hopeful, and the uplifting. This creates a vicious cycle where fear begets more fear, further distancing us from the peace and confidence we could find in a life aligned with divine principles. In the face of this panorama, it is essential to question, are we truly living according to the purpose for which we were created? God, in His wisdom, has called us to live not in the shadow of fear, but in the light of hope, faith, and love. It is clear that the necessary transformation is not only individual but collective, requiring a reassessment of our priorities as a society and how we engage with the world around us. The themes that most frequently stir the cauldron of fear in our society, pandemics, global conflicts and dramatic climate changes, are indeed troubling signs of the times. They reflect not only the immediate challenges we face, but also resonate deeply with biblical warnings about the events preceding the end times. Luke 21 verses 9, 10 and 11 provide us with a crucial perspective for facing these turbulences, reminding us that although we may expect to face wars, uprisings, natural disasters and pandemics, we should not allow fear to rule our hearts. These words offer not only a prediction, but also comfort, underscoring the importance of maintaining faith and hope in the face of adversity. This biblical passage covers a range of events, from geopolitical conflicts to natural calamities, suggesting that as we observe such events unfolding in our time, we may indeed be witnessing the preludes of the last days, as described in biblical prophecies. 
This perspective invites us to reflect on our response to these challenges, not through a lens of despair or panic, but with a vision rooted in faith and divine promise. The universality of the challenges we face, transcending political, cultural and geographical boundaries, highlights a common desire for all of us, the aspiration for security and peace in an increasingly uncertain world. This longing for refuge from danger is a natural reflection of the human condition, a quest for stability amid chaos. For Christians, however, there is an additional understanding that shapes our perception of these events. The awareness that true peace and harmony will only be fully realized with the return of Christ. This hope does not exempt us from the responsibility to act with compassion, seek justice, and work for the healing of our world. On the contrary, it gives us a foundation to face adversity with courage, wisdom, and a heart turned towards service. In the midst of the darkness and evil that undeniably pervade this sinful world, we are reminded of a fundamental truth. As Christians, we are called to be lights in the midst of darkness, bearers of hope in an environment often dominated by fear. This calling transcends mere advice. It is a summons to action and purpose, an exhortation to live differently, not being swept away by the current of panic and hopelessness that seems to grip so many hearts and minds. The biblical guidance is clear. The only fear we should harbor is the fear of God, a deep reverence that acknowledges His sovereignty and power above all things. This fear does not paralyze us but frees us, for it is accompanied by the promise of His protection and constant presence. Throughout Scripture, we are assured that God is with us, encouraging us not to fear in the face of challenges and threats that may arise. This message has not lost its relevance. It resonates with equal strength today in a world that often seems to be on the brink of abyss. Living in a state of constant fear is not the destiny for which we were created. Many find themselves trapped in cycles of anxiety and panic, preoccupied with world events and imminent threats. While it is prudent to be informed and aware of what is happening around us, an obsession with fear is a trap that diverts us from true purpose and the peace we can find in God. As Christians, we know that we are under divine protection. This does not mean that we will be immune to all forms of suffering or difficulty, but that even in the midst of storms, we can stand firm in faith, aware that our ultimate security does not rest in circumstances, but in God. The world around us may be frightening, but with God, we truly have no reason to fear. Our confidence in the sovereignty and divine protection is a fundamental pillar of the Christian faith, reminding us that regardless of circumstances, we are secure in God's hands. This confidence is not a denial of the reality of the dangers and challenges of the world, but an affirmation of God's constant presence and care for us amid these challenges. Like the children of Israel in Egypt, who were protected and spared from the plagues that ravaged the land, we too are called to live with the conviction that our security does not derive from external circumstances, but from God's promise to be with us. The story of the Exodus is a powerful testimony of God's protection over His people. While the Egyptians faced the direct consequences of their actions and the hardness of heart of their Pharaoh, the Israelites were preserved through a series of miracles, demonstrating not only God's power, but also His unwavering commitment to caring for those who are His own. This biblical narrative resonates deeply in our time, serving as a reminder that even when we face times of uncertainty or fear, our confidence is not in the faltering structures of the world, but in God's eternal faithfulness. He invites us to live not in anxiety, but in the security of His presence and protection, even when the world around us seems to be crumbling. However, trusting in God and acknowledging His sovereignty does not mean neglecting the wisdom and responsibility He has granted us. Using the brains God has given us means making prudent decisions, being prepared to face challenges, and doing our part in building a better world, all while trusting that God is in control. The wisdom found in Proverbs 21 verse 31 offers us a balanced perspective between the prudence of preparation and divine sovereignty. 
While we take prudent measures to face challenges, we recognize that ultimate victory rests in God's hands. This principle is crucial for navigating life's complexities, especially in times of uncertainty and fear. Preparing for adversities, whether by stocking supplies, saving money, or even strategically planning for the future, is an expression of wisdom and responsibility. However, the Bible reminds us that, despite our best efforts, our destiny is not in our hands but in God's. The distinction between preparation and fear is fundamental. Preparation is a proactive action, a way of exercising the dominion and responsibility that God has given us over our lives and resources. Fear, on the other hand, is a passive reaction that can paralyze and consume, distorting our perception and leading us away from trust in God. Obsessive fear of the future not only undermines our ability to live fully in the present, but also contradicts the biblical promise that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Therefore, when faced with fear, especially that generated by circumstances beyond our control, it is a reminder that such a feeling does not originate from God. He has equipped us with the strength, love, and discipline needed to face any challenge, not with a disposition for fear, but with the ability to overcome it. In this context, true preparation involves not only physical and material planning, but also spiritual and emotional strengthening. Instead of fixating on the frightening aspects of the world around us, we are called to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He is the source of our courage, the reason for our hope, and the foundation of our peace. Amid the storms of life, it is His presence that offers us security and His promise that gives us hope. The narrative of Matthew 14 about Jesus walking on water is one of the most powerful illustrations in the Bible of faith, fear, and God's saving presence amidst life's storms. In this story, we find not only an impressive miracle, but also a profound lesson on how we should navigate the challenges and uncertainties we face. The scene unfolds with the disciples in a boat, already far from land, struggling against the waves and wind. In this moment of difficulty and fear, Jesus approaches them, walking on the water. The disciples' initial reaction is one of terror. They do not recognize Jesus and think they are seeing a ghost. This moment reflects a universal human truth. In the face of the unknown or the supernatural, our first reaction may be fear. Jesus' response is immediate and reassuring. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. These words are a powerful reminder that, even in the stormiest of situations, Jesus is with us. He does not promise that we will be exempt from storms, but guarantees His presence with us through them, offering us courage instead of fear. Peter's response to Jesus is particularly instructive. He asks Jesus to invite him to walk on the water, and when Jesus does, Peter begins to walk towards him. However, upon realizing the strength of the wind, Peter allows fear to overpower him and starts to sink, crying out for salvation. Jesus immediately reaches out his hand and saves him, gently rebuking him for his little faith and doubt. This interaction between Peter and Jesus highlights a central truth about faith. It enables us to do the impossible, but fear can quickly cause us to lose focus and doubt. Faith requires us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, trusting in His presence and power, even when the circumstances around us seem threatening. When Jesus and Peter enter the boat, the wind ceases and the disciples worship Jesus, recognizing Him as the Son of God. The lesson from the story of Peter walking on water towards Jesus, only to begin sinking when he shifts his gaze from Christ to the storms around him, is deeply relevant to our contemporary life. This biblical episode teaches us about the importance of keeping our focus on Jesus, regardless of the storms, whether literal or metaphorical, that may arise in our path. When the winds of war, the rumors of pandemics, the fear of natural disasters, or any other form of crisis begin to dominate our field of vision, it is easy to feel overwhelmed and start to sink. Like Peter, our fear and concern cause us to lose balance and confidence. 
However, the key to overcoming this state is not in denying the reality of these storms or ignoring the dangers they pose, but in choosing where we place our focus. Keeping our eyes on Christ means trusting in His presence and power even in the face of fear. It means acknowledging that while we may not have control over external circumstances, we have the choice to trust in the One who has all power and authority over creation. It is this choice that transforms our perspective and gives us strength to face challenges without being consumed by fear. When we focus on Jesus, we find peace amid the storm. This doesn't mean the waves and the wind instantly disappear, but that amidst these storms we can find a steadfastness that doesn't come from ourselves but from our faith in Him. Romans 8.28 is a verse that offers a transformative perspective on how we face the adversities and challenges of the world by stating that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. We are reminded that in the divine economy, even the most terrible events can be used for a greater and more benevolent purpose. This principle is not a suggestion for passivity or a simplistic view that ignores the real pain and suffering that these events can cause. Instead, it is an invitation to look beyond immediate appearances and recognize the possibility of God working even in the most challenging circumstances. The idea that God can use adversities to draw people to Himself is not just a theological possibility. It is a reality that has been experienced by countless individuals throughout history. The suggestion to embrace terrible events does not mean desiring them or rejoicing in suffering. On the contrary, it means recognizing that amidst the chaos, pain and fear, God is actively working to redeem and restore. This implies a shift in perspective. Rather than being consumed by fear or anxiety in these situations, we can see them as opportunities for the kingdom of God to manifest in powerful ways. When we understand that our ultimate security is not in earthly circumstances, but in our relationship with Christ, our response to fear and uncertainty changes radically. We are then free to use chaos and fear not as weapons that threaten us, but as tools that can be used to witness the hope and salvation found in Jesus. This does not diminish the gravity of world events, but places our hope and trust in something, or rather someone, much greater than these events. The observation that many people, including believers, may be facing deep spiritual crises without even recognizing them, is an important call to understanding and action within the Christian community. Attacks can come from various directions, whether through marriage difficulties, unexplained health issues, or seemingly unsolvable financial challenges. The root of these problems can often be spiritual, a manifestation of the constant battle between light and darkness, between faith and fear. Hosea 4, 6 highlights the devastating consequence of lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This biblical statement underscores the critical importance of spiritual understanding and wisdom for our survival and growth. Ignorance of spiritual truths, biblical principles, and knowledge of God and His Word can leave believers vulnerable to discouragement, doubt, and yes, fear. Fear, as mentioned, is antithetical to faith. It is a tool the enemy uses to paralyze, to sow doubt, and to steer us away from trust in God. The devil delights in seeing believers consumed by fear because it distances them from the foundation of their faith. Living in a state of constant fear is living in a state of spiritual defeat where trust in God is replaced by anxiety about circumstances. The Bible repeatedly calls us to live by faith, not by what we see or feel. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we are reminded that we walk by faith, not by sight. Philippians 4, 6, 7 instructs us not to be anxious about anything but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, to present our requests to God. And John 14, 1 encourages, Let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. The contrast between the life God desires for us and the one the enemy seeks to impose is marked by a fundamental difference, faith versus fear. 
The devil's objective is to steer us away from God's will by sowing doubts and anxieties in our hearts. He knows that by making us live under the spirit of fear, he can divert us from the path laid out by God, a path of trust, courage, and dependence on him. Fear is a powerful tool in the hands of the enemy because it directly attacks our faith. It makes us question provision, protection, and even God's presence in our lives. When fear takes hold, we become trapped in a cycle of anxiety, excessively worrying about our basic needs and the future, causing us to lose sight of God's promise to take care of us. However, the Bible calls us to a different reality. We are invited to be courageous, not to be intimidated by circumstances or appearances. Boldness is a fruit of confidence in God, a sign that our faith is firmly rooted in Him, not in the storms that may arise. Trusting in God means believing that He is faithful, that His promises are true, and that He is more than capable of sustaining us and guiding us through any challenge. In a world saturated with conflicting messages, Jesus' guidance to His disciples in Matthew 24, verses 3 and 4, resonates with particular urgency. Christ's warning about deception is a clear call to vigilance and spiritual discernment, especially in an era where truth and falsehood often blur. This confusion is not merely a matter of misinformation or conflicting narratives. It is a spiritual battle for the essence of our faith and the integrity of our path with God. Jesus' warning about deception, highlighting it as a sign of His coming, underscores the importance of being grounded in truth. The forces of evil indeed vie for our attention and seek an opening to sow confusion and divert us from the path that leads to life. It is a strategy aimed not only at confusing, but also at eroding our confidence in the Word of God, replacing it with falsehoods that may seem attractive or convincing on the surface. Protecting our hearts and minds, therefore, is not merely a suggestion. It is a vital necessity for spiritual health. This implies actively guarding the gateways of our lives, our eyes, ears and thoughts, filtering the influences we allow to shape us. Paul, in Philippians 4 verse 7, speaks of the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the kind of protection we need to actively seek, a protection that keeps us centered on Christ amid a sea of competing voices. The authentic experience of God's presence equips believers with keen spiritual discernment, empowering them to distinguish between the true move of God and the deceptive imitations of the enemy. This discernment is crucial as we live in a world where spiritual forces of evil seek to divert and destroy. The ability to discern the spirit at work, whether the spirit of God or a disguised evil spirit, is a gift of the Holy Spirit, essential for our walk of faith. The pursuit of a real and personal experience with God is not merely a desire for emotional encounters or moments of spiritual ecstasy. It is a longing for a deep and transformative relationship that shapes our perception and understanding of the spiritual world. When we know God and experience His presence, we become sensitive to the nuances of spiritual activity around us, able to discern truth from falsehood, light from darkness. The episode in Matthew 17, where Jesus heals a boy possessed by demons, illustrates the reality that spiritual forces can have physical manifestations, in this case, an illness. The boy's father describes symptoms that today could be diagnosed as seizures or another medical condition, but Jesus identifies and addresses the spiritual root of the problem. This incident teaches us that not all battles are fought in the physical realm and that some struggles require discernment and spiritual intervention. The implication here is profound. Demonic forces can influence in ways that we may not always recognize or understand. They don't just manifest in obvious or cinematic ways, but may lie behind issues that seem purely physical or emotional. This doesn't mean we should see demons behind every problem in our lives, but rather that we should be aware of the reality of the spiritual realm and the need to rely on the Holy Spirit for discernment and direction. The narrative of the healing of the possessed boy, as described in Matthew 17, 
highlights the unmatched power of the name of Jesus Christ and the authority it holds over every form of illness and oppression. The immediate healing of the boy after Jesus rebukes the demon is a vivid testimony that in the presence of Christ no evil force can remain. This reminds us of the fundamental truth that by invoking the name of Jesus in faith, we position ourselves in the power of his victory on the cross, where he triumphed over sin, death, and the devil. The reality that every sickness must bow and every chain must be broken in the name of Jesus is not just a theological statement, it's a practical promise for the believer's life. Faith in God and His Word enables us to face the most diverse situations, even those that seem impossible to human eyes. When believers dare to believe in God's promises, they see the manifestation of His power in their lives, often in ways that exceed all expectations. The citation of Isaiah 53 verse 5 and Psalm 90 verse 17 illustrates how the Word of God offers not only comfort, but also active principles for our daily lives. The promise of healing and favor are examples of how scriptures speak directly to our needs and circumstances, encouraging us to trust in God regardless of external appearances. Faced with unfavorable medical reports, professional challenges, or any other adverse situation, the believer's response is to seek refuge in God's promises, remembering that He was wounded for our transgressions, and by His stripes we are healed. This doesn't deny the reality of these challenges, but places our confidence in a greater reality, God's sovereignty and power to redeem, heal, and restore. Your message is a powerful reminder that our faith in God and Jesus Christ is not just a set of theological beliefs, but the foundation upon which we build our lives, especially in the face of challenges and uncertainties. The decision to place our trust in Christ above any other source of wisdom or security is what defines us as believers. This choice reflects a deep understanding of who Jesus is and what he has promised to do in our lives. The exhortation to dare to believe in God is a call to action, a summons to live a life of authentic and vibrant faith that transcends human understanding. This act of faith is not a leap in the dark, but a confident step into the light of God's truth. Guided by trust in His promises, His character, and His word, when we face times of testing, the choice to cling to Jesus rather than seek security in worldly sources enables us to experience true victory. This victory is not based on external circumstances, but on the unchanging reality of our position in Christ. Jeremiah 29, 11's promise that God has plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope and a future, is a pillar of strength and comfort in uncertain times. The believer who rises and trusts in God, regardless of what the future may bring, lives not under the shadow of fear, but under the protection of the Almighty. This confidence in God is the ultimate response to any challenge the world may throw at us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31 This is not just a rhetorical statement. It is a truth that can transform how we live, how we face challenges, and how we navigate life's uncertainties. Belief in Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, as the bread of life that sustains, as the Prince of Peace who offers a peace that surpasses all understanding, as the light of the world and the Good Shepherd is foundational to our identity as Christians. This faith recognizes that Jesus not only performed miracles and taught transformative truths during his time on earth, but that he continues to be active and powerful in our lives today. Faith in Jesus' death and resurrection is the heart of the gospel, offering us forgiveness for sins and the promise of eternal life. This belief calls us to live a life that reflects the gratitude and love we have for Him, a life that proclaims His victory over sin and death and shares the hope we have in Christ with the world around us. Amidst the challenges and uncertainties of the world, the message of hope and victory found in Jesus Christ is more relevant than ever. We are called not to be ashamed of the gospel, the truth that has the power to save, liberate, and restore lives. 
This call to believers is a reminder that despite the aggressiveness with which deception and fear are spread by the enemy, we have in Christ a message of truth, love, and power that must be proclaimed with courage and conviction. Isaiah 41 verse 13 and 40 verse 29 offer us comfort and strength, reminding us of God's closeness and constant care. He holds our right hand and tells us not to fear because He Himself will help us. This promise is a beacon of hope in moments when we feel weak, tired, or overwhelmed by life's circumstances. God promises to give power to the weak and increase the strength of those who have no might, a promise that sustains us in difficult times. Matthew 6 verses 25 and 33 teach us to trust in God for our basic needs and to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness with the promise that all else will be added to us. These verses call us to live not by worry for tomorrow, but by faith in God's providential care, reminding us that our life is more than the material concerns that often occupy our thoughts. The enemy may be the father of fear, but God is the Lord of the future. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, came to defeat anxiety and fear, offering us a peace that surpasses all understanding. The Holy Spirit comforts and guides us even when we face the storms of life. Isaiah 41 verse 10 is a powerful statement from God to us, reinforcing that we should not fear, for He is with us. He will strengthen us, help us, and uphold us. Our response to fear and anxiety should be grounded in faith and in God's promises, remembering that we are His children, blessed with the constant presence of Christ, who promised to be with us always to the end of time. Let us be encouraged to live not in the shadow of fear, but in the light of faith. May we lean on God's promises, knowing that He has already given us victory through Jesus Christ. Stress, anxiety, and fear do not have the last word in our lives. Jesus Christ has triumphed over them. With this confidence, we can face the future not with fear, but with the certainty that we are safe in the hands of the God who loves us, protects us and guides us every step of the way.